Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Here it's his first comment. It can always be first because Steve is still sleepy. And Feather Connections got a kick out of that. Kelly got a kick. And Jan says, blessings to all you beautiful quail people. He yeah, says, hello, Kelly, and woman of spirit, Jan. Jan says, yes, I can hear you. Thank you, Jan. Oh, we got four people in here and five thumbs up already this morning. That's always good. Justin Mills says, good morning, everyone. Congratulations on the bar babies, Berna. Yeah. We got, if you've seen this morning's uh, video... There was three babies that were born very early Friday morning. I think they were born around 1 o'clock because that's about the time that I heard it sound like fighting. And then uh, at 3 o'clock, I went in to check on them. And that's when I seen the babies. Jesse says, hi, Aaron. And Aaron says, good morning, Jesse. Jesse says, hi, Kelly. Jan says, good morning, everyone. Rock Hill Home said, glad to see you this morning. Says, good morning from the mm -hmm. hill. Got my besties here and about to go play with the quail. Good to have you this morning, Rock Hill. Aaron says, we are watching from northeast Texas at Rock Hill Homestead. Yeah, you guys said you were going to go there this weekend. Jesse Mills says, hi, Jan. Oh, so that's two more, uh, two nights I didn't get very much sleep. Jan says, Berna, your new Kai are adorable. Yeah, they, they, it sounds like Kai, like you spelled it, Jan, but it's spelled like this. Christina said, good morning, y'all. Good morning, Christina. Well, I used my favorite cup yesterday, so this is my old favorite that I'm using today. Because to me, this rainbow symbolizes hope. Oh, boy, that coffee's good today. And it's down, the wind chill factor's down to 15 degrees. And it is windy and cold outside. The temperature is 25, but but with the wind chill factor puts 10 lower than that. Oh. You know, I wish, Jan, I wished it was spelled the way you spell it, because that sounds better. Looks better. But the babies are black and white, and one of them's got a little bit of the red like the mama has on it. The mama's mostly white with a little gold, golden red on her. It's, hey, Stephanie. Good morning, everyone, Stephanie says. Stephanie's my neighbor who lives downstairs and towards the other side of the building from me. <clears throat> Jan says, here in southern Indiana this morning was 11 degrees. I have no idea what the wind chill was. I call it colder than a well digger's rear. Well, the old thing is it's colder than a witch's tit, and a witch's tit was a thing on a ship. 
an iron thing on the ship. Jesse says, hi, Christina. Stephanie, I got babies up here, three of them. And the other guy is pregnant, too. Yeah, right now they're about 36 hours old. Let's see, 24 at about 1. 33 hours old. She was that sweet. <laughs> Yeah, you would have to leave your tropical apartment to come up and see them. <laughs> but they all seem to be, their hair seems to take after their daddy, you know, that. Like an English guy to where it's close to their skin instead of long. Their mama's a long hair. And Jan says, nice to meet you, Stephanie. She says, it's 125 degrees. Stephanie, the wind chill is like 15 degrees. Stephanie says, hi, everyone. It's nice to meet you all, too. So it'd be about another week before I will be able to get my hatching eggs again. Andy Rabbit, hello. Andy says hello. Jesse says, hi, Stephanie. Everybody saying hi to each other. That's great. Jesse says, my eggs hatch tonight and tomorrow. That's good. I get so tired of spam calls. It's pathetic. Stephanie asks if I'm staying warm. Yeah, with my drafty windows, I'm staying warm. That's why I'm wearing a sweater and two shirts. Because that wind just blows in through these windows. Yeah, I know apartment H. I don't want to go into apartment H. This is about quail and Kai and homesteading and stuff like that. Not about uh, town drama. Andy says, I have a few quail hatching out this morning. That is, you and Jesse both do. Good luck and happy hatching, you two. I'd be glad when I get to put some eggs into the incubator. You know how a lot of birds are born without feathers and their parents really have to take care of them? But quail are fully feathered when they're when they're hatch. 
Well, with a Kai, instead of being born bald like rabbits are, they just look like miniature, just like miniature of their parents. Fully furred and everything. You can let them, um, you can wait until eight weeks to wean them. Or you can wean the males at three weeks so that all the little girls don't get pregnant. Jan says, my hatching fever has to wait until spring. Oh, that is sad. If you kept them in your house, Jan, you'd be able to hatch probably towards the end of February. Because that way it takes you uh, 17 days to incubate and then 21 days before they go out. So that's 42 days. And he says, I had the celadon eggs being shipped out on the 29th. I think I'm going to say I'll try to be let that be my last hatch for the winter. Who knows? <clears throat> well, you know me. It doesn't matter if it's winter or summer. I can go hatching crazy. See, I'll do one small hatch, one set of eggs next week, a week from, a week and two days from today, and then um, three weeks later, I'll do another small hatch. And he says, I can too. Yeah, but the thing I'm, I'm going to be using is my um, Huba Bader. Huba Bader, yeah. I got to get the cages set up from Dale's Quails. So I have a place to put the uh, Kai and get rid of these cages I have. I mean, I might keep one of them and get rid of the um, ferret cage. And he says, I like small hatches better. They can stay in the brooder longer. Well, me with me, I can only use one or two size brooders because I had to get rid of the one from Dale's quail because I couldn't get it clean enough. But I had to put the Kai in the playpen because the babies were getting out of the cage and had a hard time getting back in. Jan says, I had them in the house last hatch. They had to keep them in because of bird flu. I don't have windows on office walls, so cross ventilation was almost non-existent. You don't have, you don't need to have a window on each end. You put a fan on one end and the window on the other end. So if you have your exhaust fan in one window and your floor fan on the other side of the room, and that would be cause cross ventilation. <coughs> At least that's how I do it. And he says, yeah, I can understand that in the apartment. Yeah, because I went back to using the um, totes. 
and I had two size totes. So it's going to be, it'll be eight weeks before I can even think of calling the guy. <coughs> I think uh, the guy would probably be ready about the same, same time that the, uh, um, <laughs> I'll get my first laying eggs. So let me see. This took uh, Lucy out a couple hours ago. Yeah, the wind chill is still at 14 degrees, even though it's 27 degrees outside. When I get done today, I got to put on my, I'm going to be making, um, cooking some quail and some carcasses and making my bone broth. Then I'll take the meat and, and shred it and use it um, something else. Woman of Spirit says, Berna, did you call all your hens? Yes, I called all my birds. Because my exper experiment was over. And I had interbred for three years. Before I started getting signs of inbreeding and the first side I noticed was uh, I had a murderous hen in other words she was and I could never find out which one it was tried to kill four other birds um, then when I started calling I came across the ones that looked like that looked really bad. They didn't have a full breast on them. Jasmine, Jasmine says, "Good morning, V," and I say, "Good morning, Jasmine. Glad you made it." And I got three babies. Did you have baby Kyle? Yes, I got three of them. They were born Friday morning about one a.m. And I saw them at 3 a.m. Jesus says, congratulations on the Kai, uh, Kai babies. And he says, woohoo. Yeah, because remember last week I was talking about that if I didn't have any by February 1st, that was going to be the end of it. And Jasmine said, hey, Andy. <coughs> uh, Andy, you should have a video, should have came out this morning at 7 o'clock about the babies. Because it was scheduled to post at 7 Well, that was uh, three hours ago, yeah. <laughs> she says, I'm not up that early, LOL. No, that's about the time I went to bed. Jasmine said, it's so chilly this morning. Lots of hot coffee for me. Jasmine, you got that right. It's 27 degrees here with wind chill factor of 14.
yesterday I post out the results of my candy run in the deep freezer. I mean, in the freeze dryer. Then this morning's um, video was about the new babies. Andy says, yes, I see it. I'll watch it after the live. Jesse says, hi, Jasmine. <coughs> Jasmine says, Koa, my Pyrenees pup, thinks this weather is wonderful, LOL. This mama doesn't want to play with them out there. Yeah, that's when Great Pyrenees usually, that's when they become active is in the winter. Andy says, it's cold here. Coffee ain't warm enough this morning. That's why I like my cup, because I like putting my hand around it to keep them warm, even when they're not cold. Jasmine says, hey, Jesse, tell Loretta I said hi. And the babies are happy. They're in there chirping, but you can't hardly hear them because they're so soft-spoken. Jasmine says, West Plains is even colder than me in, in Crane. LOL, Andy. Andy says, Berna, I do that with my cup too. Best hand warmers ever. Yep. Great massagers when you have arthritis in your hands, too. I started something this morning, you guys. Let me see if I can get it up. The beginning of a shawl. Jasmine says, is the mama Kai a good mama? She's a very good mama. Andy says, Jasmine, you're lucky then. Brr. Jesse says, Jasmine, Loretta said hi. Jasmine says, what's on the menu for Thanksgiving? With me... Um, I don't know, because I don't actually cook for myself. If I did, it would be just be quail that I got in the freezer. And he's, Andy and Stephanie both like the colors of, of the, this. Yeah, this is called a top down shawl. And it's a very basic stitch. You got a, a roll of solid, then a roll of railroad tracks. I don't know how different you can see that. But that's with number six yarn. That's chunky. Jasmine says, hey, girl, pretty colors. <coughs> Eddie says, my Thanksgiving, I am having turkey and stuffing, my holiday corn and whatever my kids make. That sounds good. When my belated husband was alive, he was a, he loved to eat. And he could out eat two construction workers at one meal. But anyhow, 
for Thanksgiving, I made the turkey, mashed potatoes, and giblet gravy, stuffing. I made the stuffing for everybody else because I don't like stuffing because I don't like soggy bread. Um, then I would bake 11 pies. And five or six of them would make it to the deep freezer. Because I did my pie baking for Thanksgiving. Because after Thanksgiving, I started doing Christmas cookies. And that's back when I used to have kids coming around all the time. Yes, Mrs. We're keeping it simple this year. Just us and our friend Sue. You met her at... QC22. So goose breast, quail, sweet potatoes from, from the garden, sourdough stuffing, homemade cranberry sauce, and baked mac, macaroni and cheese. Andy says, I don't much like stuffing either. Yeah. It's just like when I make a roast, I don't like my potato cooked in the roast. Yep, mac and cheese. Jasmine, I got some cheddar that I put through the freeze dryer. And I had to powder that yet so I could have my instant macaroni and cheese. And he says, hey, Jasmine, you make your sourdough? Jasmine says, I love freeze-dried cheese. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't have as much oil as standard feed does. Jesse says, just got done trimming all the dog's toenails, then gave them all a sizzle stick as a treat. Just in time to get ready for work. Well, Jesse, you have a blessed day at work. Stay safe. And he says, I tried once from scratch, but I killed the starter before I could get it going. Jasmine says, I do, but I let it go. This sourdough is from a local bakery for the stuffing. Jesse says, I still listen in while I'm at work. Oh, I know, Jesse. But this is my time that I can tell you to have a blessed day at work. Let all the Karens roll off you like water off a duck's back. And he says, that may be some stuffing I might like. Jesus says, I, had ju I just had too much going on to keep up with the sourdough and can kombucha yeah you're doing the work of two people jasmine that would say you don't have time for the fun stuff be right back i'm going to warm up my cup because it's down to two sips. Okay, I'm back.
Hello, that's what happens with the friendship bread for me, too. Jasmine says, yes, I don't put it in the bird. Soggy stuffing is black. Baked by itself, it's delicious, especially with the dense, tangy sourdough. Jesse said, Jesse just found a news article. There's an MU on the road in Hillsboro, Ohio. Tell Zach he can go get another one, LOL. Oh, there might be somebody's Thanksgiving meal by the time Zach gets around to my post, my text. Jasmine says, LOL, exactly, Andy. The friendship bread never ending cooking, LOL. Jesse says, it's been loose a couple days and nobody has been able to catch it. Yeah, he says he's got enough birds. <laughs> he's focusing on the quail right now. Maybe we'll send Stephanie out to catch it. If she's still around. Nope, she's not around. Jesse says, if it was closer, I'd go catch it. Emus are fun to wrestle with. Jesse says, be right back, making more coffee. Oh, there Stephanie is. Stephanie says, where is everyone from? I'm in Ohio. And he says, yes, Jasmine, I'll sometimes just take and toss the cookie sometimes on it and just refeed for next time. And he says she's in Missouri, Missouri. <laughs> Woman of Spirit says, I'm in southern Indiana at the Kentucky line. Jan, you're close enough that you can always come visit me. Jesse says, Iowa here. Nobody's answering my call. So that means they're all pretty content and probably taking a nap. And Jasmine's in mis misery too. <laughs> When I lived in Arkansas, people came down from Missouri. And uh, he asked him where they came from, and they'd say they would say misery. Jan says, I'm about six hours away from Qualcomm location. Okay, and I'm about 15 minutes south of them. And he says, I had a random guinea bird show up and perched on the handrail the other day. Well, you should have grabbed that one and clipped its wings. <laughs> Jasmine says, back. French press coffee is steeping. Love the smell for fresh ground coffee beans. I know what I'm going to be ordering after in January is I'm going to be ordering some soft wheat and hard wheat and grind it myself. And he says, I gave it to a friend yesterday. Well, that's cool. Now they can get rid of some of their ticks. 
and fleas. Jasmine says, oh, B, you should freeze dry some whole coffee beans, then dip them in chocolate. I love munching on chocolate covered coffee beans. Around me, Jasmine, coffee beans are expensive. Besides that, I don't have any tea. Andy says, right, she has a few already, so it should be happy there. Jan says, I grind my own coffee. So much better flavor. And Stephanie says, really, Jasmine? Jasmine says, no, for me. <laughs> I will send you some moolah. Oh, no, send me the beans. And I'll do that all for you. And he says, fresh ground beans are so much better. The Stephanie laugh. And Jazz says, yes, Stephanie, so good. What kind of beans do you like? Do you like the dark roast, medium roast, light roast? Jan says, Verna, we have a box store here. They have coffee beans for a dollar a bag. Oh, I was asking Jasmine, Stephanie. <laughs> Jesu says, fine, I will send you my favorite coffee beans, Berna. I like dark roast. The oiler, the better. Jazz says, Starbucks brand. Oh, I don't trust things from Starbucks. Because when I had my Kirk, Car, uh, Starbucks coffee tasted bad. Just a second. Echo, what's my notification? One more notification from Amazon Shopping. A shipment will arrive today. Jasmine, I feel the same way you do. Because to me, it tastes like it's got chemicals in it that shouldn't have. And he says, I'm not impressed with Starbucks. Different strokes for different folks. If somebody likes it, that's good. Yes, as well. I'm not into going to Starbucks, but I didn't pass up on that deal. You're right, Jan, because if it's a dollar a bag, it makes it worth it instead of paying seven to twelve dollars a bag, uh, a pound. Hey, cuz you can tell he's not awake yet because he's yawning and stretching still. Andy says, our hospital got a Starbucks in it a while back. Ha ha. Jen says, good morning, Steve. Jasmine says, how long do the Kai babies nurse? They can nurse up to eight weeks, 
you can wean them at eight. But others advise to wean them at three when you separate the males from the females and let the females continue nursing so they don't get their sisters pregnant. Because sisters can get pregnant at three weeks old. And Jasmine says, good morning, Sunshine Steve. Hey, cuz, did you see that I got new babies? And he says, I didn't buy some marked down bags of Starbucks coffee. It's better than anything I've gotten from a Starbucks shop. Yeah, I would have to use a lot of quail eggshells in Starbucks coffee. Jasmine says, three weeks pregnant. Yeah, three weeks old, they can get pregnant. And they carry the baby for... Eight weeks, about. Jesse said, hi, Steve. Stephanie says, that's interesting. C says, this the original litter or you got more it's the original breeders uh the one that i thought was pregnant at qualcon had a litter friday morning <coughs> you might as well say thursday night friday morning she says good morning everyone too many names to type individually <laughs> And I'll be so glad when I get my quail going again. I'm thinking about getting jumbo whites and jumbo white wing ferals. And that way I'll separate the white wings from the ferals when they um, hatch. So I'll end up with three lines of birds. And I can enter, I can keep them separate easily. So he says, AFK making coffee. Oh, wow. He came here before he made coffee. I feel honored that I came before the elixir of the gods. <clears throat> so cuz well, I'll wait till he gets back before I say it so I got my um, what's so funny is Thursday evening, I got my um, cages from Dale's Quails. So they had the babies before I could even unbox the uh, um, cage, let alone put it together. And he says, oh, my goodness, those are pretty cute babies, Berna. I just watched the video on, your, on my phone. Yeah, they're all black and white, and one of them has some of the rusty markings in it as well and see having two females and two males that gives me two pure lines 
that I can use at a later date. Andy says, I like the black and white. Yeah, they're all black and white. But like I said, one of them in the black part above the white, it has a little bit of the rust splotches in it. But you won't know if anyone's going to have long hair until they get a little older. But I have, I've held two of the babies so far. And the mama let me pet her yesterday. Now they're up and talking. And he says, my male is black and white. I got rid of my other male a week ago. All the girls are pregnant by the old man. Stephanie says, the mama let you pet her? Yeah. That was the first time since I got her that she let me stroke her for a little bit. Jasmine says, so they have hair? Or are they pinkies like other rodent-like creatures? No, they're, they are they when they are born, they look just like miniature guinea, you know, kai. They pull fur. They're able to actually start eating even. They do nurse, but right now their parents are teaching them what to eat and stuff. They're not pinkies like rabbits. Jeffrey says, I haven't watched the video yet. So interesting. Yeah, you're going to be surprised when you see towards the end of the video where you can actually see the babies. I may have to get rid of my single layer breeder cage to make more room in the animal room. Used to be quail room, but now I got more than quail in there, so I'm going to have to change the name. Maybe I should call it the pantry. <laughs> Kelly says, I'm here, I promise, just getting you ready for farmer's market and listening. Hey, Kelly, you got to do what you got to do. I appreciate you listening. So at this point, the only thing I have to talk about is the new babies. Jasmine says, regular old urban farmer you are, Verna. <laughs> Jasmine, you want to get a laugh. My nurse told me Thursday that, no, it was Friday. I called her on the phone and I told her about the babies and um, she said that my self-sufficiency scares her. But she knows that if anything happens, she knows who to go to for help. And he says, my first two, I got the lady told me they were five to eight weeks old. But after mine had babies, I figured out they were probably only maybe a week old. Yeah, they, if they were about that big, around, uh, that big right there that they were could have been newborns
Thank you, Jasmine. <laughs> Steve says, did she say why your self-sufficiency scares her? It's just that she knows it's a good kind of scare. She just, because she went on to say that she, uh, she could never do it, but if anything ever came down, she know who to talk to. Kelly says, go grab a guinea pig and show us. I want to see. Well, they're a little faster now that they're a little older, so we could see if I can grab one. And he says, there is a big difference in the size of newborn to three weeks old, for sure. Jasmine says, oh boy, LOL. She should be scared, but definitely should use that as motivation to make some changes to be more prepared for her family in the disaster. Ed got me. Says, hi, Verna and everyone else. Hi, Ed. Somebody says, show us a guinea pig, Verna. Jasmine says, shouldn't. Okay, just a minute. Let me see if I can grab one. It's okay, baby. It's okay. Okay, and I don't want to keep her away from my mom very long. But this is one. See the little red spots on her? And this is only what? About 30 something hours old. Oh. There you go. Now I've held every single one of the babies. Everybody says good morning to add. Jasmine says, Ed, did you and Wendy do anything for your wedding anniversary? Kelly says, that's a newborn. Yes, Kelly, that's a newborn that was born about 1 o'clock Friday morning. Somebody says, adorable. Jasmine says, oh, my word. So dang gum cute, B. And he says, yes, I can see the red. That's the only one that has red on it. There's one that's got more black plus some white. It looks more like it's daddy. And Kelly says, oh, the cute noises. Jasmine says, yes, Kelly, LOL. Kelly says, "Did do you raise them for me, Verna? Yes, Kelly. She goes, that's a lot of pets if not. And so, as C says, chunky, almost snack like. <laughs> and it says, I like the two sided looking one. My favorite is the one that I picked up and showed you guys. The other two are. are just as cute, but not they, they don't have the special marking. But see, I put a solid black male with uh, the white long hair that has like calico markings on her head. That says, No, we both actually forgot what day it was. LOL. We both remember the date, just didn't realize that it was that day. LOL. We got a nice meal the next day. That's great, Ed. And he says, you know how to sex them? Yes, I do. And I'm going to wait till they're a little older before I try to do that. It was pretty much like you do a rabbit. And 
And he says, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is, ha, ha, ha. Doesn't matter when you celebrate. Just that you celebrate. Oh, so true. And it agrees. Yep. And I'm proud of Ed for how far he's gotten so far. I think that's the best anniversary gift he can give to his wife is by improving his health. Jasmine says, now, Verna, how many breeders are you planning to keep of the guy? Right now, I'm just staying with the four that I originally started with. Now, if I get another house, it might be a different story. But then again, I might go go into the Havana. I mean, I think it's Havana rabbits. And he says, we forget our anniversary almost every year, haha, <laughs> till about a week later. Well, Ted and I did it right. We did it September 1st. C so says, yeah, it was Havana. Desmond says, that's a lot of cute talk. Oh, it's going to be hard to dispatch all the cuteness. Nope. I just don't think that way. I just got to keep reminding myself what I'm raising them for. I mean, I got a 50 pound bag of feet in there. And then it's just not after you got to clean up after them. Jasmine asks, how big are the letters for Kai? They're usually anywhere from two to four. You can get six, but it's rare. And the funny thing about them, Jasmine, is, oh, I forget how, what the gestation period is. 56 to 70 something days. Ah. Uh, there we go. Let me see. 59 to 72 days is the gestation period of it. The more babies they have in them, the shorter the time. And he says, oh, thanks for reminding me. I used the last of the guinea pig food yesterday. I had to go get some today by noon. Yes, it's Andy, how big are the Havana rabbit letters? I still think I might go into the Havana rabbits either way. Let me see about the Havana rabbits. That doesn't tell me anything right there.
No, oh, that was take too long to tell me. Oh, thanks for running me. I, okay. Andy. It might be a better turnaround time for you, Verna, with the Havana Zenith. That's what I'm thinking, Jasmine. Stephanie says, where's Lucy? She's laying down in her cave. Havana says, I had one I was going to use for a foster mom, but can't. She has anywhere from 9 to 11 babies. Steve says, I don't think I could butcher either one. Andy says her first litter was six. Vicky says, good morning. Good morning, Vicky. Glad you could join us. Jasmine says, see, those numbers make better sense if you're looking for a meat production small animal. You know, Jasmine, I agree. That's why I've been thinking about the Havanas. But I probably can't get any Havanas until um, QuailCon. Yeah, this is hi, Becky. That says, heck, those things are born pregnant just about. Andy says, I have another older doe that only has four to seven at the time. So she has become the foster mom if I breed a new mama doe. In other words, if one has too many babies, it's good to have a, a, a foster mom. Oh, there's 10 people in here. We got 12 likes. Good going, people. Now let's see if we can get more people in here and more likes. C says, how can one be a foster mom if they don't have a letter of their own? Jasmine says, got a thumbs up then. Almost forgot. Yeah, because the kai take too long to have babies, whereas the rabbit only takes 30, 31 days, I think. She says, I did my two last night. <laughs> I guess Aaron's busy, probably busy cooking. Christine, are you still here? And he says, I breed a new mom rabbit and a great mom the same day. So if I need to foster any babies. Oh, I understand. Because some of those litters can be really big and a new mom might not be able to handle it all. Can you bottle feed a rabbit if you have to, Andy? Or Jasmine. And says, I do not. Jan says, I'm still here. I'm loading quail eggs and curtains. Cartoons. And says, it's too much work. I would agree. But I was just wondering in case um, in case something happened, you know, if anybody did it. Jasmine says it's a lot of work. <clears throat> well, I know these babies are going to be healthy. 
because they got their milk for their mama. Jan says, I have bottle fed three of my baby bunnies. <laughs> Just to give them the strength to be able to fight for mama's milk. <coughs> and he says it's easier to breed two or more does at the same time to foster over. That's good. Jasmine says you can, but not worth the work when I raw feed cats and dogs. You know, Jasmine, that's what I would do. Jasmine says, Verna, you always worry me with that cough, my dear. Well, I usually cough until I, it breaks loose, and then I'm fine. But you got to be careful. I'll probably outlive you. Because <laughs> I'm too bullheaded to die. <laughs> you know, the, when I was born, I was a preemie. And I had my first asthma attack when I was only an hour old, or less than an hour old, rather. So the doctor told my parents that I probably wouldn't see my first birthday. I'll be 65 in May. And he says, my thought is like this. A bottle-fed baby rabbit is about like a spray, a spray leg quail. Andy, I would agree on that. Jazza says, ha, 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 the ornery ones live the longest. Better step up my ornery game. Yeah, take some lessons from me, Jasmine. Jazz says, woman of spirit, my does have seven to nine kids each time. So fostering is a great idea if it can be done. You know, on the Kai, a baby is called a pup. Just like if it was a dog. She says, in that case, I'll live forever. <laughs> I always told my kids I was going to live to 125. See, I, I outlived my mother. She died when she was 55. So in order to outlive my dad, I had to live past 85 years old. My mom died young from an aneurysm in the primal part of her brain. The trouble is you got to live each day as though it would be your last. And he says, if I could still get it around myself, I don't mind living to 125. If I can't take care of the rabbits, what's the point? I agree, Andy. That's why my self-sufficiency scares my nerves. Because <laughs> no matter how down I get physically, I pull myself back up. But I need a haircut. My hair is too long. Because it says, my mom will be 88 in January. She's ornery as hell. Yep. 
Jasmine says she needs a haircut too. Yeah, let's see. I got a turtleneck on. I just can cut my hair into a bob by following my collar. About three years ago, I shaved my head. So this is three years growth, you guys. From ball headed to this. Katrina, Cabby, 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 congratulations, Verna. Hi to everyone from Gilroy, California. Hey, Katrina, good morning. I see you have watched this morning's video. Good morning, Katrina. Katrina, you'll have to watch this because earlier I showed the most unique ones of the babies on camera this morning. And everybody saying good morning to Katrina. I guess Christina's busy because she hasn't said anything in a long time. She was, oh, we'll rewatch the beginning. Well, you would have to rewatch, uh, let's say it's somewhere between 90 minutes. I mean, not 90, but um, 45 minutes in, I think it was. Now, while everybody's saying hi. They're already at Linda's, I think. I think they went yesterday. I'll be right back, you guys. I need more coffee. Let me see what I miss. Christina says, hi, everyone. Jess says, my hair is down past my waist now. Thought about cutting it short, then the thought went away. LOL. Well, I have degenerative disc problem in my neck. I can't let my hair get much longer than this, or I start having neck pain. And he says, boy, I thought about letting my hair grow down to my waist again. Then the thought went away. <laughs> Christina says, woman of spirit, mine too. I need to trim it though. I do it myself. Short hair is a bad idea for me. Well, I'm going to cut mine like this. Into a bob.
And when my nurse needs a trim, she'll ask me to do it when she visits me. Katrina asks, is it snowy there? No, we had some snow flurries yesterday, but none of it stuck. We didn't even get a dusting. I don't know about Zach and them. Because they're, they're in 15 minutes north of us. They could get a whole snowstorm and I wouldn't see a drop of it. Glenn Wells. Good morning, Glenn. Says, howdy, everyone. Running late this morning. 88 little birdies doing fine in Bruder Box Day 3. Congratulations, Glenn. And I had three births Friday morning. The Kai finally, finally gave birth. And he says, it is so much faster to brush short hair it's past my shoulder as I'm ready for a haircut. That's the stage I'm at, Andy. Cut a good six inches off. Steve says, last night he had a dream about a freeze dryer. Guess that is a sign I shouldn't call a harvest right. You got that right, cuz. Andy says, congratulations, Glenn, and good morning. <coughs> Stephanie says, no snow, it's too cold to snow. Stephanie, I seen it snow at zero degrees, so it ain't too cold to snow. And Andy says, my hair is about as long as yours, V. But see, this is only three years growth from after I went ball headed. Kat Katrina says, nice, Glenn. My 41 in the brooder will be three weeks old Monday and Tuesday. And Stephanie says, wow. You know, it snows in Alaska, and Alaska gets below zero and has snow. It has it snowing. This coffee is so good. This is my third cup already. Since starting live. Yes, this is making breakfast and listening. Yeah, I got up late, Jasmine. I haven't had breakfast yet. I think after I take Lucy for her walk at noon, I'm going to fix um, French toast from homemade bread and quail eggs. See, and I use organic milk because I don't like the hormones they put in regular milk. Jasmine says, sound delicious. C says, breakfast equals coffee. Yeah, and then, uh, and then what you eat after that is called either brunch or lunch. And then I got to pull my stuff out of the freezer and throw in my one pot to make my quilt, uh, bone broth. And Well, no, it's not really going to be a bone broth. It will have bones in it, but um, I'm going to throw pork quail and all the bones from when I deboned. Andy says, I need to butcher more rabbits. But it has gotten cold. This week may be warm, but hubby is home 
and he doesn't like me doing it when he's home. Well, t send him to the store and then do it. Glenn says, 38 in back bedroom brooder, three weeks old today, climatizing them one more week than to the outside cages. That's great, Glenn. Jasmine says, I'm making fried apples, breakfast hash with sweet potatoes, onions, and venison sausage, and quail eggs on sourdough. Jasmine, I'm coming over for breakfast. <laughs> And he says, ha ha, if only he would leave by himself. Does he eat the rabbits, Andy? Katrina says, can I make a reservation? Jasmine says, come on over. It's been at least 30 years since I've had venison. And he says, no. Nope. And he says, only me and my granddaughter will. Ah, he's one of those people. Ed says, I'm still here watching and listening. Jasmine says, I need to butcher about 50 quail today to make room for my grow outs that are still inside. Katrina said, hi, Ed. <coughs> Oh, and you guys, you want to see what shirt I'm wearing today? And my shirt's a liar today. See, says, I had venison last week, but they didn't know how to cook it. That's terrible. Ed says, Brandon is out hunting in the snow, Burr. Jess says, good morning, Ed. Jasmine says, oh, Steve. Glenn says, just guessing you don't want to hear about the four-point buck I just put in the freezer. Well, Glenn, you know, I'm always up for donations <laughs> of venison. <laughs> Katrina says, nice shirt. It's one of my Shire shirts. It's the first one that I bought. And I bought it when it first came out. C says, it's not a liar. You don't have a quail problem. Yeah, but the back is lying because it says I have many right now. I'm kind of quail poor. And he says, maybe ground rabbit, he might. I'm deboning all the front legs for grinding in hopes. That's good. Ed says, hi, Katrina and woman of spirit. Woman of spirit says, wow, Glenn, congratulations. See, I've never been hunting and he says, tell Dan hello. I don't know what that means or who she's talking to. Oh, you're happy. Hi, Dan. How you doing? We need to get you to eat a little more healthier, Dan.
And he says, he says, no rabbit. Well, then maybe I'll send you a kai to have for dinner. Jasmine says, I can't hunt, but I definitely help with the butchery and preparing of deer and other game. Just can't pull the trigger unless it's to save my life. Jasmine says, hi, Dan, LOL. You know, Jasmine, I've never been hunting, so I don't know if I could do I could probably do it now. I couldn't when I was younger, I know. Because I used to um, watch my stepdad when he was um, cleaning his catch whether it be squirrel or rabbit and the first time I seen it he was doing a squirrel and when he took the fur off it looked to me like it was it looked just like a baby and he says my granddaughter told him one day if he would eat rabbit he would love them too Yep, you can love you can love things both ways, alive and dead. Alive as you're taking care of them, and for dinner when they're dead. Jasmine says we have a resident white-tailed doe that raises her babies on our property. Yeah, but Jasmine, you don't usually hunt on your property, do you? She says I've had squirrel or rabbit in. I have had squirrel or rabbit in over 50 years. Do you mean you haven't had it? Jasmine says she and her babies are spared from being hunted now. Other deer are fair game in my husband's opinion. He enjoys seeing her around. She says have not had. Sorry. Well, let me see. It's been... Close to 50 years since I've had it, Steve. But I still loved it. No, no, it's been 40-something years. But I still remember how to cook it, and I still remember what it tastes like. No, wait a minute. Let me think about it. Yeah, my oldest daughter's is 45 years old. And I think the last time I had it, she was six years old. So it's been 39 years since I've had it. Clint says, I want me some squirrel and dumplings with biscuits. Yep. I love fried squirrel. Dip it in a little seasoned flour and an an egg, some seasoned flour again. Then fry it on the stove. Tastes better than chicken.
And he says, Hubby bought home a three-week-old squirrel a few years back. As I raised him up, I kept reminding the good old days when hunters, uh, well, I got rabbits again, ha ha. Jasmine says, I need to try frying breaded quail. Haven't done that yet. It is good, Jasmine. And since I separate my breasts from the legs, I use the legs as hot wings. And he says, no way I wanted to raise squirrel. They are too crazy. That's putting it mildly. Nikki James, good morning. Nikki James says, morning, late today. Was playing with the baby bunnies. Hey, Nikki, I got baby Kai. And he says, I miss eating them, though. Jazz says, hey, Nikki. Jan says, I used to barbecue squirrel on the grill. My children would say, oh, mama, these little baby chicken legs are so yummy, LOL. Jasmine says, tell Brad I said hi. And everybody said hi to Nikki, and Nikki's responding to everybody. Grin says, boil them about halfway done, then cover with barbecue sauce and throw them in the grill. Best grill ever. Yep, Glenn. Nikki says, I saw the video. How cute. Yep, so she finally gave me three babies. And earlier in this one, I showed a close-up of my favorite one of the babies, the most unique one. Nikki says, hi, Andy and Katrina. <coughs> Andy says, I made squirrel jerky once. It was good. Have you made quail jerky yet, Andy? Nikki says, Brad says hi, LOL. He is sitting here beside me. Hi, Brad. I cooked my, last time I had quail, about last week, I cooked my quail in the oven that, that was the boneless quail I had. And I covered it in jerk seasoning. And, oh, that was so good. And he says, I've only butchered 10 quail so far. I will someday after I get more to butcher. I've got at least 40 quail in the freezer right now. Jasmine says, all this food talk has me wanting comfort food, like pot pie. Now, quail or rabbit, either one would be good in a pot pie. Andy says, I've only kept them for eggs all these years. Jasmine says, yes, either. Or you can do both. And he says, yes, rabbit pot pie, yummy. C says, I have eight quail left in the freezer. Right now, my refrigerator freezer and my deep freezer are both full. Between buying on sales and what I process. That's why I can't pre-freeze anything for the freeze dryer. I have to do it all fresh.
Jasmine says, speaking of pie, what pies are your favorite for Thanksgiving? What I used to do, Jasmine, was cheesecake, um, chocolate pecan pie, apple, cherry, sweet potato pudding, peach, coconut cream, And, and sometimes peach. Nikki says, we had fettuccine Alfredo with quail breast and salad the other day. Jasmine says, oh, cheesecake. Oh, and I forgot pumpkin. Steve says, me, pumpkin, or sweet potato? Jasmine says, Lord have mercy, Verna. Sounds incredible. But I used to make 11 pies on Thanksgiving and put half of them in the freezer for Christmas so that I could, after Thanksgiving, I can concentrate on Christmas cookies. Katrina says, homemade pumpkin pie and fudge nut pie. Jasmine says, cherry pound size, great. Katrina says, 11 pies, wow. Yeah, I had to make two of everybody's favorite. Because I made one of every everybody in the family's favorite. I mean, two of them, rather. And he says, make a spice pudding pie. It has a plate pumpkin pie. It's pudding mix. Don't know what I do when they stop making that flavor. And Nikki says... Brad makes excellent cherry pie. Andy, you can make your own pudding on the stove. And uh, make your own spice pudding pie. Jasmine says, my mom makes a mean buttermilk pie. And C says, my daughter made me a rhubarb pie for my birthday. I love those. And those of you that bought the Quill in the Kitchen's first book, it does have the recipe for my cheesecake in it where I use quail eggs. And Zach and Jenna both tasted it and loved it. She says, I got tears when I eat it. My grandmother used to make those for me. Jenna says, oh, I love all things rhubarb in the summer. Oh, Steve. Nikki says, oh, Steve, I forgot that. Love strawberry rhubarb pie. Christina said, Jasmine, I have a video on it. It's super good. My grandma says it originally came out of a magazine, but we don't know which one. Innards are cooked in a double boiler first before putting into the oven. And he says, I will have to start making it. I had a hard time finding any last year. Haven't looked yet this year. Glenn says, finish hauling close to three gallons of pecan has for this year. That is wonderful, Glenn. How many pecan trees do you have? If you ever tap for tree syrup, like maple syrup or that, I would tap a pecan tree and make some pecan syrup. Travis says, how do we get your cookbook? Uh, right now, it's the only one on sale it, that's out. It's cookbook number two. And I'll give you the link.
guess this You don't have number one available, or did you combine them together? For number one, uh, you have to send me a private message on Facebook. Nikki says, I would let people come get pecans here, LOL. We have seven of those trees in our yard. And not big on them. She says you need to put number one back up for those of us that missed it. She's, I mean, Ed said sound breaking up. It could be because I'm almost yelling. Katrina says, Ed, try reloading. Grafted Branch Hosted says, hello. Hi, Matt. How are you doing today? And Steve, the reason why it was pulled, because that book should have been at a high pri higher price because it is so big. And he says, you said PM on Facebook? Yep. PM me on Facebook. Katrina says, hi, Grafted Branch. And Matt says, doing good. Ought to join. Jessica says, my grandma used to have a huge pecan grove, and she would mail us like 25 pounds as a gift. They were tiny and sweet. A light golden cup color. A tornado destroyed the growth several years ago. Matt says, morning, y'all. And Matt says, listening while doing chores. Hey, Matt, I had some baby Kais. Katrina says, wow, that would be wonderful. Sorry it was lost. When I lived in Arkansas, it seemed like every place I went, uh, there was pecan trees. Matt says, how cool. She says, at a prior house, I had a pecan tree. I loved it. Hurricane Elvis dropped it on my house. Then three years later, the house burnt to the ground. I had to move. Jesu says, I know, Katrina. We were all def devastated. Oklahoma tornadoes are raw. Jesu says, hi, Matt. Matt says, howdy, y'all. Now, Andy, refresh my memory. Where are you at? What state you live in now?
She says, I thought Andy was in Missouri. Yeah, the misery, that's right. Ten people in here, we have 14 likes. Six more likes, and then I'll tie for my best. Jesse says, it's time for me to get breakfast served and hang out with Luke. Nice chatting over coffee with my friends this morning. Jasmine, I'm glad you made it. And enjoy your meal and have a blessed day. I have about four minutes and I have to leave. She says, my screen shows 15. Only need one more. Katrina says, enjoy the eat the day. I hope he's feeling better. Nikki says, have a great day, Jasmine. Everybody's telling Jasmine, have a great day. No, my personal best is 20. I had 20 at one time. I only see 15, Steve. 20 is what I need. Oh, now I see 16. Four more. It will tie my personal best. Jasmine says, I came back for a thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you, Jasmine. <laughs> and Steve agreed with me. Devin's, all right, bye, loves. Have a wonderful day. Life things go with you, Jasmine, for you and Luke both. Let's just stay safe, everyone. Best wishes to you and yours. You too, Glenn, and thank you for coming. And it is time for us to skedaddle. So everybody have a blessed day and see you tomorrow night at the latest.